everybody, welcome back to the Tech on Purpose YouTube channel. I'm Lauren Lev, and today we are celebrating International Girls in Information, Communication, and Technologies Day. Girls in ICT Day is about recognizing the incredible achievements of women in IT and encouraging young women to pursue careers in STEM. We're also going to dive into a crucial aspect of IT, cybersecurity. At the end of this video, we'll share simple steps you can take now to protect yourself from a major cyber disaster. So make sure you stay tuned until the end because I'm going to be giving away a free cyber risk assessment that will help you figure out the gaps in your cybersecurity posture. All right, thank you for joining me, Marsha Dempster, the VP of Channel and MSP. Thanks for being with me today to celebrate International Women in ICT. Thank you for having me, Lauren. I'm so excited to be here. Of course. Yeah. So we're just going to jump right in. Um, what are some common misconceptions about women in technology? Um, I would say the first one is that people assume there, there just aren't women in technology. And uh, you and I are here to show them that there are plenty of women in te technology. Uh, I think a lot of people assume that because these are tech related jobs and they can have some really intense uh, requirements, educational, technical certifications that you should have that it's a male dominated world, but it absolutely is not. Um, a lot of the women that I work with at Keeper are on the engineering side, they're on the development side. So I'm, I'm happy to say that there is definitely space in all aspects of technology for women. How important do you think is it for companies to have gender diversity within their technology team specifically? You know, the challenges that women have in a tech based industry a lot of it comes from having a lack of mentorship, a lack of workplace culture. Uh, I think so much of that is easily solvable. I think that, you know, even if you're in a smaller company, you could start your own women in tech group. Um, if you're at a huge company, they probably probably already have a women in tech group that fosters great culture, that fosters mentorship. Uh, you. That could be, you know, your next boss or your next hire could be in that group. So I think companies in general really understand the benefits of diversity and inclusion. And specifically when it comes to women, because I am one, um, I think it's so important to, to recognize that women are getting a lot of these STEM degrees. Women are, you know, excelling in math, they're excelling in sciences and technology and engineering. And I think we need to honor that and make space at all of the tables for women so that everybody's got a seat at the table. As a woman in technology, what kind of challenges have you faced personally that you don't feel like your male counterparts would have faced? We feel like we have to work twice as hard to get half of the recognition. Um, I feel like that's something that men will never understand. Uh, I think that it's important for our male allies and leadership and you know whoever that may be that our male allies recognize that that is something that we feel and something that we struggle with instead of just dismissing it and saying well that's not true you you know you get just as much recognition as i do mm -hmm. i would counter that by saying maybe i do but i had to do you know three times more work than you did just mm -hmm. to get that recognition that being said what do you feel like the future for women in technology holds i feel like the future is incredibly bright i mean we have females in our C-suite at Keeper. Um, you see female female CEOs in large, large tech companies. Um, it's becoming more and more normal. And it's not this like, oh my gosh, they have a woman CEO anymore. Now it's just, it's like, oh, that's great. I feel like the sky's the limit. And I feel like women are really doing the work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the women before me kind of paved the way for me. I hope that I'm, you know, not only leaving doors open behind me, but like encouraging people to walk through them, like come with me, like mm -hmm. let's do this together and let's make this all a better network, a more diverse network, different perspectives. Every business, no matter what you're in, is going to benefit from having diverse and different perspectives in any boardroom, in any C-suite office, in any level of the company discussion is fostered by different opinions and that's where real changes are made. And I see that happening every day. So it's very encouraging. There's this quote and I'll have to pop it up on the screen because whoever originally said it, said it much more eloquently than I did. Um, but it's, I don't want to be seen as a great female leader. I just want right. to be a great leader. So switching into our more cybersecurity focused portion of today, 
Um, in your opinion, what are the most pressing cybersecurity challenges that you think organizations specifically are facing today? And then how do you propose addressing them? Since I have worked in technology and all different aspects of technology over the course of 20 plus years now, um, I would say that the thing that I see that is the most pressing, that would be the easiest thing for companies to adapt and to change is securing your credentials. Um, that's where Keeper started. Uh, we're moving more into the enterprise privileged access management, AKA PAM space. Um, but our, you know, where we started our bread and butter is credential management and credential security. So that's your passwords. That is, you know, if you have developers in your organization that share secrets, so machine to machine credential sharing, um, how are you keeping those secure? How are you making sure your employees aren't using the same password on their laptop to get into their email as they are for their personal Facebook or something like that? Having secured credentials is becoming and is the most important thing that companies can tackle. I say it's like the first and easiest part of cybersecurity strategy to really implement because everyone has passwords. We all hate them. We don't wanna remember them. You don't wanna write them down next to your desk. Looking ahead, what do you believe are the emerging trends in cybersecurity that society at large will face within the next 10 years? And what can we do now to protect ourselves? Yeah, I mean, that's scary when you think about it. Uh, I think the rise of AI comes with good and bad. Um, it can help with so many things. It can help with research. It can help with certain aspects of really, really difficult jobs, um, you know, surgery and things like that. But it also can be used as a weapon. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty scary to think of what artific artificial intelligence is actually capable of. And I think we're kind of at that point where we as a society have to decide, like, how are we going to use this? Is this a good tool or is this an evil tool? But, you know, I see a lot of a lot of new scams in play, um, a lot of new phishing attempts using AI, whether it's like spoofing someone's voice or spoofing somebody's email. Um, it's just getting harder and harder to recognize, you know, is this email legit? Is this website legit? Are they asking this information because they need it or am I being scammed? You know, I think we're all doing a good job of kind of having our defenses up and double checking everything, but we could always do better. Can you explain to our audience what Keeper is really briefly? Sure, yeah. Um, so Keeper is, uh, we're really an enterprise uh, PAM solution. PAM is privileged access management. Um, so that's just a fancy way of saying uh, we take your security very seriously. Um, we encrypt all of your data. Uh, we have a dark web monitoring tool that's uh, it scans all your passwords without us actually knowing your passwords because we use ciphertext and decryption and encryption happens on your device. Um, it keeps all of your passwords, keeps all of that important paperwork that we talked about. Um, and then there's also a component that is called Keeper Connections, uh, which is kind of like a uh, VPN replacement. Uh, and then Secrets Manager, which is credential sharing for um, like your DevOps teams, your engineers. So that's more like machine to machine credential sharing. So all of that encompasses a PAM solution, but you know, our real bread and butter is our enterprise password ma management tool, mm -hmm. which is second to none. I don't know what I would do without Keeper. Um, and this is not just a shameless plug for you guys, but maybe it is. So you remember one password, you get into your Keeper, you click the icon, everything is there. It will, it'll already come yes. up, like give you a complex password. I, yes. love, I, I always use those. And then another thing is that you can share. So instead of like mm -hmm. glipping someone or texting someone your password, you can just share that one access, which my husband and I use all the time because, you know. Absolutely. You have to share stuff. And if, if I text it to him or he texts it to me, well, that's how it's, it's out there at all. Yeah, I we live and die by Keeper in this house. Hey, yeah. I love hearing that. <laughs> For those of you who have stayed tuned until the end, as a big thank you, we are giving away a free cybersecurity risk assessment when you visit techonpurpose.net slash cybersecurity. You can also sign up for a free 14-day trial of our quantified data risk assessment and a free email span checkup. For more of me, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel down below. And until then, make sure you stay cyber safe.